Hey there guys, we're going to be going back to the Janna's Far Manticore fight for an updated rank 1 clear video. I have spent time to heavily optimize my clear. I now have a very easy to follow turn chart for you guys to go along with. Um, the damage requirements are very low at this point. Your gear does not need to be that strong. Um, morale is handled. The whole clear has been overhauled. Um, I am going to delist my previous rank 1 video because I don't, want, I don't want people using that video. It was very messy. It was very rushed. This is the guide to follow. I'll put a link in the description or the comments if you really want to see the rank 1 video. It's going to be hidden but not like deleted. Um, but don't use that guide. This is the guide you want for the fight. So let's get in here and turn on all modifiers and we're going to do a clear and then I'll show you the gear and discuss potential unit swaps. A few of these units are replaceable but um, a lot of them are not. So here's the party and we'll go over the gear and all at the end of the video. You can use timestamp timestamps to skip around if you want. So yeah, this, this clear basically has almost no RNG. Uh, the damage requirement is very easy to hit. Um, it's been heavily, heavily optimized. Okay, so to start off, Kaito in the base form wearing a wind and an earth weapon is going to just hit the boss three times. Kresnik in the shift form is going to use Stimulant to get the morale going. Uh, Chizuru is going to staunch Samurai Spirit, strong Samurai Spirit, and breezy barrier. We're going to have Sky shift and do her shift at LB. Uh, thankfully, there's no RNG on Sky's drops either. We'll always get her LB with this clear. Uh, Sylvie is going to normal attack to, to um, re-raise herself because she's our provoker. And make sure Sylvie is higher in the party than Runda. And Runda's going to LB. Now, depending on who gets the mana drain, as long as it's not Chizuru being drained to literally zero mana, you're going to be fine. So this is like the only RNG in the whole clear. Um, let's see who gets the mana drain. All right, Sky got the mana drain. Totally fine. Doesn't matter. As long as Chizuru doesn't get drained to zero, you're fine. And if Chizuru does get drained to zero, you could give her base form something like Philosopher's Stone, and you'd be fine. But I kind of, I kind of wanted the base form geared in pure damage, so we didn't do that. But um, yeah, that's the only RNG in the entire fight, as long as Chizuru doesn't start this turn at zero mana. So, Chizuru is now going to refill mana for the party. We're going to do Enduring Loyalty to fill mana. Also, it's going to re-raise Sylvie. We're going to do Breezy again, and we're going to do Eastern Winds. Uh, let's see, Sylvie is going to triple. We're going to Gravel Egg to imbue the party with Earth. We're going to Vines and petals uh let's see here we're gonna go to the base form with sky and she's going to hit the boss a few times sky is also using an earth and a wind weapon in the base form and we got mana from chizuru even though she got mana drained uh we're gonna shift kaito and we're gonna do in the shift form uh deep submersion and double destabilizing that fills morale and breaks the boss runda is going to cover hit the boss and we'll just do Shelga for mitigation. We don't really need Shelga. That's like a free turn. It's like whatever. And now Kresnik is going to imbue the boss. Because on turn two, the boss has accuracy and does crazy damage on turn two. But Runda's going to now absorb it all. So no problem. So there we go. A lot of damage. Um, the boss can miss because blind or accuracy down, etc. Um, even though he has uh, accuracy. But there we go. So, we absorb all the damage thanks to Kresnik. Okay. So, turn three. And because we're shifting Sky every turn, uh, we always have our LB guaranteed, like I mentioned. So, this time, the first thing we're going to do is Chizuru is going to Oroshi to imbue the party with Wind. We're going to Breezy Barrier. And we're going to Eastern Winds again. So, now that we're imbued with Earth from Sylvie and Wind from Chizuru... We don't need anyone to specifically seal the boss. Because as long as we hit the boss, period, we're going to seal him. So we're going to stack Sky again. Kaito, on this turn, is going to Torrential Force to get ready for his modifiers. Then Deep and Destabilizing. Uh, Runda can go ahead and SLB. We're going to have Sylvie do, again, Petals and Vines, mostly for the morale fill. And then Compassion at Night. You can do Sylvie first if someone needed mana because of the drain. And that will fill off their mana. Fill off their mana. And then Kresnik is going to triple white. We're going to re-raise on Runda, re-raise on Sylvie, very important, and then just Curaja. 
it's very important to keep re-raise on Sylvie every single turn. So someone's always got to re-raise Sylvie because she is not going to be counterattacking pretty much ever. We're, we're manually doing re-raise every turn, which is also more reliable and doesn't rely on RNG. Like every now and then, Sylvie may counterattack because some of some abilities um, do trigger counters, but for the most part, she's not going to be countering. Anyway, here's turn three. The boss has accuracy, but relatively low damage. Um, the very first attack of the turn will deal really high damage. Notice that run is at half health. The first attack will always deal crazy high damage if it hits your tank. It might miss because of blind or accuracy down, but if it hits, it's going to do like 30,000 damage to Ronda. He should never die from it. If he is dying from it, bulk him up more. But um, the, rest of the, attacks, the, the rest of the attacks that turn are all very, very weak. All right, so Chizuru is going to Beast Pulverizer. Kaito is going to just break three times with um, Deep and Double Destabilizing. Make sure you use those because those have a morale gain component included in them. Kresnik is going to Potion. We're going to Antioxidant to cure the Imperils. And again, we're going to re-raise on Sylvie. Sky, back to the base form. Now, now I... I know we could have used Sky's LB there, but we're going to follow the rotation in case your LB wasn't full. We're going to always guarantee fill it, and we're still going to be at max stacks by the burst turns. So don't worry about that. Um, so it's turn four. We're going to use Sylvie to, again, Petals and Vines, and we're going to use her Magnus just because it gives a big morale boost. That's the only reason for that. Watch the morale gauge. It fills it up a decent chunk. And then, again, Runda can cover, hit, and Shelga. If you don't have enough mana for all that, just use cover or literally just guard, whatever. It doesn't really matter. Yeah, Runda, Runda is really just here for covering and his um, mitigation buff. So there we go. The boss has no accuracy on turn four, so you'll take zero damage. So that's nice. We're bursting on turn seven, by the way. And the reason we're going to turn seven is I wanted more time to fill the morale gauge. The morale gauge is a big headache because of the death every turn. So we're going to turn seven to burst to give more time for morale fill with Kresnik, etc. So turn five, we're going to shift and do Sylvie's shifted LB. It's a three turn buff, but it'll still be there in the burst turn. We're going to shift Sky and do her LB. We're still imbued with Earth Element from uh, Sylvie, and Sylvie's Earth Imbue will actually wear off by the burst turn because we did it on that specific turn. Um, Kaito on this turn, again, just deep and double destabilizing. That breaks the boss and fills morale gauge. We're going to shift Chizuru, and in the shift form, we're going to use her Magnus for the 100% wind damp. Um, this turn, Kresnik is going to Potion, Remedy, and again, re-raise on Sylvie. And uh, Runda can again just do whatever. We're just going to cover, hit the boss twice, whatever. You can also use, you know, shell, protect. Doesn't really matter. Just keep that cover up. If you saw my, my original cap video, you might have noticed one turn I forgot to use cover on Runda and bad things happened. Yeah, we're not going to have any mistakes like that in this video. So there goes the mana on Sky. Not a big deal. We've got plans to always deal with the mana drain. So that's totally fine. A lot of morale penalties from these deaths. Yeah, the morale is definitely, definitely a struggle on this fight, which is a big reason Kresnik is here. Um, okay, so we need mana, which is fine. So we'll just use Kresnik, and we're going to use Sylvie for mana. So Kresnik is going to double potion, and we're going to medicinal mastery for AoE re-raise, mostly as a safety mechanic. Sylvie is going to, again, petals and vines for the morale fill, and compassionate for the mana fill. It'll also cure the poison, I think. Yeah, Cure's Poison. Um, let's see. Sky in the base form. We're going to be bursting next turn. So, Tyvis' Spirit. Shizuru, Shift Form. Tyvis' Spirit. Kaito is going to Natural and Deadly. These are his big uh, debuffs. And we're going to Crashing Waves. That's going to auto-cast Crashing Wave again after the burst turn and Dispel for us, which is really good. And then SLB on Runda to keep that mitigation going. Okay, so again, more attacks. Uh, turn six, the boss does have accuracy. It shouldn't kill your Runda. You should be fine here. Um, thanks to Runda's mitigation, the damage over time is basically doing nothing to the party. There's a gravity attack. Whatever. It's fine. Who got the mana drain? I didn't even see. I think so. I think Sky got it. Um, or Chizuru got it. I don't know. Don't know, don't care. It doesn't matter. So we're going to be bursting at this turn. But before we burst, we're going to use Sylvie to buff up even further. We didn't do Insect Killer yet. Sylvie's going to do that in about five seconds. 
Okay, so first thing we're going to do on the burst turn. So, so okay, here's the burst turn. So here's the morale. We still didn't max out morale because um, the morale on this fight is crazy. Uh, 193%. That's very, very high. It should be totally fine. Um, if you don't have things like, you know, Wilkes card, double Sylvie card, morale will be worse. Um, but we're going to overcap by a, by a hefty amount. So don't worry too much about the morale gauge. Just get it as high as you can. So Sylvie on the burst turn is going to shift here. We're going to Insect Killer, uh, beat an Insect on Chizuru, because that is our highest DPS unit. And we're just going to double carrying to refill mana for the party, healing, etc. Okay, uh, now it is time to burst. So now we're going to use the attack and magic buff. Technically we don't even need that. We had 400 buffs from Sylvie, but whatever. Uh, so Kaito is going to triple Blade Storm, which is modifier boosted from the skill we did on turn three. Um, it should be, assuming I did the the calculations right. Yep, boost the damage. Um, Chizuru is going to shift the LB. Kresnik is going to Claw of the Dragon. That's mostly for the chain count score, but also it'll build the chain quicker. Um, Sky is going to shift and cap with her LB, and we're going to triple Bolting with Runda who is going to uh, match up with Kaito. So Kaito and Runda are going to bolt in. Chizuru and Kresnik are going to Extreme Nova, and we're going to cap with Sky. And this should be a very healthy overcap. If your gear isn't as good, if your morale isn't as high, you should still very, very, very comfortably overcap this boss. We did 3.5. We did a billion damage more. Notice how Sylvie guts it there. She guts because of um, the damage over time, and she's losing all our mitigation. That's totally fine. We gave her guts. I'll show you more in the gearing. Also notice Sylvie is auto-casting healing with Phoenix Synergy. Again, I'll go over the gearing in the in the the um in the end. So back in the base form with Sylvie, where we're going to gravel egg to imbue the party with earth, because we gotta always seal the boss. We're going to Paladin's defense to make this first attack on Runda um, basically deal no damage and get Mirage, and then Compassionate to heal the party, Mana Regen, etc. Now notice that the crashing waves from Kaito auto-casted and removed the boss's mitigation, but it didn't remove his buffs. So Kaito is going to do that, but first of all, Chizuru, back in the base form, we're going to Orochi to uh, imbue the party with Wind, Eastern Winds again, and we're going to Strong Samurai Spirit to um, fill the morale gauge. It's already maxed out, but it, it might not have been. All right, so now Kaito is going to triple. We're going to Unpredictable to get rid of the boss's stat buffs. We're going to Torrential Force again to get his modifiers going. And we're going to Deep Submersion to break the boss, Katana, and Peril, all that goodness. Uh, Sky in the base form is going to just use um, some Hit the Boss. We can use her Magnus too, because why not? It doesn't really matter. Uh, we'll just do some stuff. Uh, let's see, Kresnik is going to uh, Potion. We need to Antioxidant the Imperils away, and we're going to re-raise on Sylvie, who is going to again be taking the uh, Death Attacks. And Runda can just whatever. We're going to Cover, we're going to Runda Laser, and we're going to Shelga. Just never ever provoke with Runda. If you provoke with Runda, it's a game over. We need Sylvie always provoking. So there's the damage over time, but again we've got the... Um, SLB buffs from Runda, it's totally fine. You might be looking at the turn count and being very nervous by finishing off the fight in time. Don't worry about it. It's planned out. We're going to finish the fight on turn 10. Totally fine. Do not worry about the turn count. We are, we are going to perfect score this. Okay, so Sylvie is now going to buff us up again. So wait a second for auto casting and all that. Okay, don't use Runda yet. Runda has to go last on this turn. So Sylvie is going to shift. We're going to Insect Killer. This time we're going to give it to Sky because Sky is going to be our big burster now. We're going to also, I've got your back on Sky for a 300% LB buff. And we're going to Paladin's Offense just for more buffing. So that's going to get that handled. Um, Kresnik is going to triple. We're going to Potion. We're going to Remedy, and again, always, 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 re-raise on Sylvie. Uh, now, Chizuru is stuck in the base form still. So she is going to Beast Pulverizer. Kaito is going to Triple Blade Storm, which has Modifier Boost. And we're going to Cap with Sylvie. Or Sky. 
Um, we'll go ahead and do the 400% attack and magic buff. Make sure you don't use Runda yet, but he's going to LB later. Don't use him yet. So go ahead and do this. This, if your variance is god tier, might even kill the boss. My god, it did. That that won't always happen. Okay, I've got the turn the turn cart the turn chart for you. Um, that that will not always happen. That was that was god tier variance. Okay, so if we didn't kill the boss that turn, if the boss had not died that turn, um, he would have done a bunch of attacks. Um, Run would have covered it. By the way, after we did all that bursting, you will then use Runda's SLB. That'll refill Sky's LB enough to burst again next turn. Um, anyway, the boss would do a bunch of attacks. It's going to be irrelevant. Runda's covering it all. No damage taken. It'll kill Sky. She'll re-raise. No big deal. Okay. On the final turn 10, if the boss is still alive, if your damage isn't as good, if your variance isn't in as insane, um, Sylvie would shift and do her S, her LB in the shift form. I've got this all on the turn chart for you guys. Um, then the rest of the party would burst literally the same as the turn 7 burst. Um, Runda would triple bolting. Kaito would triple blade storm. That would match together. You would shift Chizuru and use her shifted LB. Um, and then Kresnik would extreme Nova frames. And Sky would have her LB refilled because of Runda last turn. And she'll use her LB and cap. And that will easily finish off the fight. Um, here's, here's the damage breakdown. Uh, Sky looks higher than Chizuru. That's not really a fair comparison because we kind of OTK'd the boss on turn 9. While Chizuru was still stuck in the base form. Uh, Chizuru would have gotten a second LB on turn 10 if the boss hadn't died. And Chizuru's damage would look a lot higher. But because we killed the boss on turn 9, um, it, it, we, didn't, we didn't get that far. In any case, there was... Oh my god. I am literally done farming. I'm done farming. My, my guide videos have gotten me three, three green tickets. Outstanding. I, I'm done farming. Look at that. So cool. Um, anyway, uh, so all modifiers. So that was, that was the perfect rank 1 guide. So here is the team. Um, with this specific strategy in mind, a few units are irreplaceable. Kaito is... I mean, technically Kaito could be replaced. I guess Kaito could be replaced by Freevia as the breaker and support chainer. Um, yeah, I guess Freevia could replace Kaito. That, that should be a viable swap. Um, Kresnik is kind of a big deal for the morale fill. Also, imbuing the boss on turn two makes revival very easy. Also, he does re-raise almost every turn in the fight, and that is kind of important. So Kresnik might be required on this strategy. Chizuru, kind of a big deal. She really carries the damage. Um, also, she is our source of AoE wind imbue, wind amplify, etc. She's also our source of beast killer. So... You might be able to replace Chizuru with like Wilk or Esther. And then as far as Sky goes, Sky completely replaceable. Um, any DPS you want. So Esther, um, Wilk, uh, maybe Laura Croft, um, maybe uh, Olivera could potentially do it. I'm not entirely sure. Um, you would have to find a chain partner for Olivera, but maybe it'll work. Um, you know, you can, you can figure things out. Uh, you could actually have Kresnik instead of chaining with Chizuru. Kresnik could be on like Anima and quad cast Dark Gut from Anima and chain with Olivera's base form. And that could work. Um, Runda, Runda, I mean, he's free, so there's no, there's no reason not to take him, so just take Runda. Uh, he does 85% mitigation. It makes the damage over time extremely easy to survive, and he also covers all the damage, and he tanks it very easily. And then Sylvie. Sylvie may be replaceable with Ling or Bulwark, maybe, um, but that would be a lot harder of a swap. Uh, Ling brings a lot of buffing. She's our source of insect killer. So maybe if Roberta is on the party, you could replace Ling. I don't know. But anyway, here's the team. So in party slot one, um, Sylvie has passive provoke. That's basically it. Uh, we gave her a source of guts, and I apparently forgot a materia. Whoops. Oh, well. Guts, Phoenix Synergy, and if you own it, Philosopher's Stone, that keeps, uh, that keeps her mana full if she gets mana drained. Her own card for the, for the morale fill. Shift Form, um, I gave her Poppy's Paintbrush so she can seal. We never actually needed her to seal, so that's, 
Oh, never mind, never mind. No, no, no. yeah, that is important. Uh, she sealed the boss on turn seven with a uh, carrion strike. Yeah, so give her a wind and an earth weapon. If you don't have either Lion Saber or Poppy's Paintbrush, uh, her STMR is not important. Take that off. Uh, make sure she's wearing her TMR instead and just dual wield like a wind weapon in one hand. Actually, you're going to be imbued with wind, so never mind. Just give her an earth weapon because turn seven, you're wind imbued and the whole party's dealing wind damage. So all we need is earth damage on turn seven. Um, other than that, you know, provoker buffer she dies every single turn i gave her blizzard orb like as a redundancy she basically never countered but it doesn't hurt so why not runda now runda wants a little bit of wind and earth resist you don't need that much and honestly you could probably go with zero wind and earth resist but i, I gave him a little bit just in case um he does want 100 percent evasion that is very useful please gear him that way um uh, run his arm, run his shield, etc. Sort of like, give him as much bulk as you can fit. The power cut card, best card in the game. Um, full evasion. Uh, a little bit hard to gear him for evasion. We got dragon, fallen moon, and dodge roll. That's 80% and 20% more from run to shield. Um, I guess, technically speaking, evasion isn't required. You could go pure bulk, and it'd be fine. I like evasion, because when the boss misses... Every time the boss connects and deals damage, the boss gains morale. So every attack that you evade is like, you know, uh, 30 less morale the boss gains. So evade as much as you can and you will, you will, the boss will gain less morale. But if you, if you can't gear him full evasion while high bulk, then just, you know, do whatever you can. Just make sure he never ever uses provoke because he cannot be the death target. Uh, Sky in the base form, a wind and earth weapon. If you don't own Lion Saber, again, just dual wield a weapon in each hand or use Poppy's paintbrush. Um, just, you know, an, an earth weapon in one hand, a wind weapon in the other hand. Because she seals the boss on turn two, and it's kind of important. Um, Treasure Memorial Ring, give someone, an, give someone that starts the fight in a form this. It's free morale, you know, free real estate. Go for it. Why not? Um, and then other than that, Tyvus' Spirit, very important. Uh, Philosopher's Stone, in case you get to Mana Drain. If you don't own it, not a big deal. There's a card. Shift Form, Intrinsic Ability, makes sure it's so brainlessly easy to gear for this. This is 250 to uh, Beast and Insect, so incredibly easy to gear Sky for this. We're going with a Katana build because we don't want to use... Um, we don't want to have to worry about Imperil. But if you want to use a Spear, then on turn 4, use her Magnus. And I'm going to actually include this, so... Hit on the turn chart times two plus Magnus on turn four and turn eight. That way the boss will always have a spear in peril. There we go. So the boss will always be spear in peril. So if you want to use Kane's Lance, totally fine. Um, but I gave her a katana. So here's her build. Kaito, base form, obsidian bracer, um, just whatever. Again, a wind and an earth weapon. If you don't own that for the 42nd time, just dual wield a wind and an earth weapon. Kaito is our turn one seal unit. He hits the boss in the base form on turn one to seal. Uh, guts, bulk, etc. Shift form, we're using the new card. Um, LB damage versus beast and insect. Um, actually, we never, did, we never did LB. Forget the LB damage, uh, just chain damage. Uh, the LB is an old build. It doesn't really matter, though. So he's... Maxed Beast and 250 Insect Killer. So there we go. Chizuru in the base form. Now I geared her for pure damage that way. And I gave her a Philosopher's Stone so she can regenerate some mana if she gets mana drained. If you don't own Philosopher's Stone, um, you just you know hope she doesn't get mana drained on turn two or turn one. Uh, but damage for the base form, because we do chain on turn four and turn nine with her base form. Now shift form is LB damage versus Beast and Insect. Tyvis' Spirit in the shift form is kind of a big deal. It's a really big damage boost. Um, the best card you have, uh, you know, really high attack power, maxed LB, maxed Beast, max Insect, and she does the most damage. It didn't look that way with the turn, the turn breakdown or the, the damage report because we killed the boss. We killed the boss before Chizuru got a second burst. She only got one burst the whole clear. And then Kresnik, starting in the shift form, if you own it. Give him the, the new rod from Morgana because this auto cast 500 morale fill on turn one. That's a really nice boost. It's only on turn one, so do it in the shift form. Other than that, um, mana reduction and Philosopher's Stone. So if he ever gets mana drained, he can still have mana, mana remaining. Um, and then base form, whatever. Uh, his gear is not super important, but he does want Eye of the Dragon. 
We definitely need a way to support chain with him. Um, yeah, this is extreme Nova frames. Uh, and don't dual wield. And But if you're using uh, Oliveira, like I said, stick him on Anima, learn Dark Gut, and give him the Irony's Ring as a support chainer for Oliveira. Okay, there is the cleaned up, much better rank one video. The turn chart will be in the comments. And if you really want to see the messy original turn or rank one clear, I'll have a link in the comments, but that video is getting delisted in about five seconds. All right, see you in a bit.